So this is something that I've been wanting to do. And so I'm a part of education careers. And in this program, I am able to go and be able to observe the classroom. And I was able to have the opportunity to go over to an elementary school and observe the first grade and fifth grade. And first grade, they were doing anything that you'd think a first grade would do. They were doing arts and crafts, and they were learning how to count. But fifth grade, fifth grade was what got me, because when I went into the fifth grade classroom, they were doing an activity. And with this activity, they were doing it with Legos. And they'd pick up a card, and it'd say, build a truck. Simple. But they were able to do anything with the truck. They could add wings, have big tires, small tires. Now then the teacher says, you can get out your Chromebook and post this on Seesaw. And I go, okay, what's Seesaw? <laughs> no. Teacher replies, she's like, oh, it's this cool thing where they can take pictures of what they build or of what they're doing in class, and they can click post it. And it will come to me, and I'll approve it. Once I approve it, the parents are able to see what they're doing in class from their phone with this app. And I say, that's cool. I had the Elmo in fifth grade. <laughs> you know, pictures. But thinking of that made me think, technology has evolved since I was from kindergarten to now. Kindergarten, I had the overhead. You know, the thing with the transparent sheets, if you put your hand on the answers, all the ink got on you. <laughs> yeah, that was like a huge frustration because I would be like, can you go back? I didn't get the answer. And the teacher would go, it's on my hand. <laughs> and I say, crap, you know? But that's okay because later on, the Elmo was invented, guys. The Elmo, this was when the original piece of paper copy could be put on the, on the wall, on the screen. And that was like a lightsaber, you know, because no smudges. But then that got to the smart board. Now, the smart board was kind of there and it kind of wasn't. My technology teacher had it and it's the coolest thing. You had a pen that was special and you could only write on the smart board with that pen. Didn't work on anything else. But, you know, that came and went, but then the projector came. And that's what, that's what I have today, you know? You come in class and the teacher had something projected onto the whiteboard. Simple, easy. Some classes don't use it, but a lot of classes do because a lot of classes have now moved on to having everything on Google Classroom, which is, what's next? Google Classroom, I don't know if any of you know what it is, but Google Classroom is something where the teacher has a classroom log or a little code that you type in, and then you're added in the class. Now, this was introduced to me my sophomore year, and I had about two to three classes, not, not many at all. But that's because we only had classroom sets of the Chromebooks. Whereas now, this year, every middle school student and high school student was able to get their own Chromebooks. Awesome, it is great. And now it's, I have one, two, about six classes on Google Classroom. Six out of seven classes I am in school. That's technically, six hours a day looking at my Chromebook that I got from school. Now think of that. Six hours, six classes. On top of that, you have phones. On top of that, you have TVs that you watch at home. That's more screen time than you think. And it's amazing to me that we're able to do this because technology has evolved and it's great. Google Classroom allows me to see what I've missed. If I was sick, if I was away, I'm able to turn in my assignment as well. Awesome, great, that gets rid of 
having to go ask your teacher, having to go through all the, can I turn this in? You know, and then we have snow days. We've had like nine. So, but I'm able to catch up with my work because Google Classroom allows me to see what we've missed. That's great. I love it. Easy. But here's the problem, is that we're spending a lot of time on our screens. Um, I don't know if anyone has a new Apple update. I updated mine like two weeks ago because I get scared of the update sometimes. Like iOS 11 like scared me. Um, and when I updated my phone, Apple introduced me to the new setting, screen time. And a week later, it showed me that my screen time was nine hours on my phone in a day. My mom's here, she's like, oh my gosh, that's so much, you know. But if you really think of it, how many times are we looking at our screens? How many times are we picking up our phone, opening our Chromebook, laptop, going online, going on social media, all throughout the day, posting assignments too. Nine hours plus class, that's so much on screen time. And students these days are coming into kindergarten, having more time tapping on their parents' iPhones, tablets, you know, and that's, that's great, you know? But students are losing the gripping because they're tapping more. These students come into the classroom having to go with physical therapy and all that to get the gripping, fine motor development and all that. And that's because we're tapping, we're looking at screens more. But are we finding the balance? The balance between using screen time and not using screen time. That is what needs to be found in classrooms. You know, maybe it's, if it's a paragraph, have students write it in a notebook. Now, if it's a 12 page essay, I assume you do that on Google Classroom. You wouldn't want to write a 12 page essay. That's, that's a lot, you know, that's like 1200 words right there, I guess. My math doesn't add up, but. <laughs> I know that there's a balance that we can find in the classroom, we can, but teachers can't control what you're doing at home. But we can control it in the classroom. Half of the time, do it on your Chromebook. Half the time, do it on a piece of paper. You know, it's, things, it's easy things like that. Um, I don't know if any parents know this, but in classrooms, there's the phone pocket and the students, oh my gosh, the phone pockets. We just, oh, the phone pockets. You put your phone in the pocket and you can't touch your phone and it's awful. It's terrible. I'm sitting there looking at it and I'm like, I need it. You know, but that's, but here's the thing. I did that my first semester, my first hour. My teacher said, put your phones in the pocket. That's your attendance. And that got me thinking, she is smart, that's a smart teacher right there, because this allowed students to be more productive in class. They weren't looking at social media, they were doing the work, like what you're supposed to do in school. But it's simple things like that, finding the solution and finding it even if it's small. Put the phones in the pockets, put your phones in the backpack. We recently had a psychology teacher, and I oh, love him. He would go, backpacks and phones away, where I can't see them, you can't see them, nobody can see them. And it changed because we wouldn't have our phones out, and we'd talk, we'd have a conversation in class. It's finding the balance, finding easy ways to put the screens down, proper etiquette, put those Chromebook screens down. <laughs> it's gonna be those small solutions, but finding the balance is gonna get students to be off screen more and in the world more. 
Technology is great, it's advancing. But we need to find a balance because if we don't find the balance, we're gonna be on technology 24 seven in classrooms. And that's gonna lose the writing, the reading on a book, art, music, gym. If we're in technology 24 seven in the classroom, we're gonna lose a lot. So challenge your classroom, challenge the students. How much screen time are you going to have in your classroom? Put them in the phone, phone case, put them in a bin, put them in a box, put an assignment, 15 minutes on that assignment on that Chromebook, then move on to a paper assignment. It's small solutions like that that's going to help us find the balance between screen time and off screen. Thank you.